Welcome to World Mission Topics Lesson 4. I do not own the rights to this music. The topic is Save Me, the most important prayer you'll ever pray. Today's lesson text is coming out of Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. The memory verses, For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's Romans chapter 10, verses 12 through 13. Our key terms for today's lesson. Important, Greek, and saved. Important means something of great significance or value. Likely to have a profound effect on success, survival, or well-being. Greek. A Greek either by nationality whether a native of the mainland or of the Greek islands or colonies. The name embraces all nations, not Jews, that made the language, customs, and learning of the Greeks their own. The primary reference is to, to a difference of religion and worship. Saved means to save, keep safe and sound, to rescue from danger or destruction, deliver from sin or its consequences, admitted to eternal life, gain, and salvation. Our lesson text coming out of Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. And straightway, Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray, and when the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit, and they cried out for fear. But straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth thou art the Son of God. The greatest prayer that you can pray is the prayer for Jesus to save you. You might ask, from what do you need to be saved? You must be saved or rescued from the power of evil and sin in your life. You find that you are powerless to the evil and sin in your life, and you do things that you did not want to do or intend on doing. You also need to be saved from the penalty of the curse of evil and sin in your life. The Word of God tells us that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life, and that's Romans chapter 6, verse 23. The payment of sin is what Jesus came to save us from. Jesus came to the earth for a specific purpose, and that was to save us from the payment of death and give us the gift of eternal life. God sent his son Jesus to rescue us and save us. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And that's John chapter 3, verses 16 and 17. We are in this very cruel world, and Jesus came to us with the mission. The Bible tells us his mission clearly when it states, for the Son of Man has come to save that which was lost. And that's Matthew chapter 18, verse 11. 
I am certain that the historical record of an incident in the life of Apostle Peter and his subsequent prayer can help to clarify what God wants to do in our lives. Matthew chapter 14 verse 30 records the very brief prayer prayed by Apostle Peter. His prayer simply stated, Lord, save me. This prayer is not noted for its eloquence of flowing language, but it represents a sincere heart that has a real need from Jesus. Let's look at what led Peter to pray this urgent prayer. Matthew chapter 14 verses 22 to 33 records the events. Jesus had just completed a miraculous feat. He had fed over 10,000 people, counting women and children, with only five small loaves of bread and two fish. Everyone ate and was filled. Jesus then instructed his disciples to go to the other side of the lake by boat. As the 12 men were going, things became very rough on the water and difficult just as our lives can become very difficult. Sometimes things can even seem to be falling apart and we can feel all alone. There are storms that we can face in our families, on our jobs, in our marriages, with financial situations, issues concerning our health, and many others. It seems that these storms happen at the worst times. The text tells us that this particular storm happened during the fourth watch, which is between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. This is the time of night when it is the darkest. However, we should not be afraid of our current position and unfavorable circumstances because Jesus always sees us and is coming to our rescue. The word tells us that Jesus went to them and that's found in Matthew 14 verse 25. The problem though is not if Jesus will come to us, but our response after he comes. In the text, when the disciples saw Jesus walking on the sea, they were afraid and thought that he was a ghost. Yet Jesus continued to speak saying, do not be afraid. Wisely, Peter knew that he was in a desperate situation. Therefore, he needed a desperate solution. He took Jesus up on his invitation shook loose of the fear and started walking to Jesus on the water. This is the most important decision for all of us. We must shake loose the chains put in our minds and hearts and step out in faith. Peter left his mates in the boat and went to Christ. In the boat, there was sure death and destruction, but with Jesus, there is peace, life and strength. However, as Peter walked on the water, he took his eyes off Jesus, and this is when Peter could have drowned. Conversely, he prayed a simple three-word urgent prayer, saying, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him. What a prevailing prayer. Only three words, but it saved Peter's life. If you feel like you are sinking in the sea of life, if it seems the harder you try, the worse things get. Just pray the same prayer that Peter prayed. Lord, save me. You will never have to face the storms of life alone again. The Bible reminds us that there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. And that's Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Quit trying the same things that have failed you over and over again. We have paid money for help, sacrificed for help, and done difficult things. Yet the most powerful prayer that you can pray is, Lord, save me. Regardless of what you have ever done in your life, Jesus is waiting, willing, and ready to save you. He says, for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that's Romans chapter 10, verse 13. That includes you. I hope that you pray this urgent prayer and allow Jesus to give you a new life. Walk with him forever. Mission application questions. Question one, have you asked Jesus to save you from your sins? And when? Question two, 
Have you ever felt overwhelmed with the storms of life? Did you ask Jesus to save you or did you try to swim on your own? Question three, is there a point that we are too far or beyond God saving? World Missions Prayer Points. Let us pray for nations where less than 2% are Christian. Let us pray that the world will be saved. And let us pray that God will save us from sin, trouble, and temptation. The end. God bless you, and thank you for joining me today.